and it'll be really easy to drink from this after on. Just remember to smooth out your top because we're not savages. Hello you dirty potters. How are you today? Today's video is going to be the final installment in our bottle making video series. In the first video I showed you guys how to make a cylinder and turn that into a bottle. In the second video I showed you how to make curves with it. And in a previous video in the beginner section I showed you guys how to choke clay in. I mentioned these three videos because it's very important you watch these for the skill set that we're going to need for today's video. Because in today's video we're learning how to make a double humped gourd. Something that looks a little bit like this. And while half of you right now are probably guessing that I just took two forms and stuck them together, that's not the case at all. Actually, I was always taught to just make my double humped gourds in one throw, in one shape, much like this. I didn't fuse, score, or slip anything together. So today, I'm going to show you guys how to do it how I learned to do it in one sexy curvy bottle Stop neck throw. It. Now before we get this video started, as I said before, it's very important that you watch those three videos that I made beforehand. If you haven't seen those three videos, I will link them all down below in order. This is kind of like an end of the road intermediate technique. We're literally going to be taking a cylinder and curving it all the way outwards and then curving it all the way inwards and then taking it all the way back outwards and putting it all the way back inwards and making a mouth that you can drink from all in one go. We're not tying these two pieces together or scoring and slipping them. So it's gonna be a little bit more intermediate than most people would assume. With all that out of the way, let's get started with step one, which is of course always making the cylinder. <laughs> Potter tip! At this point, I can assume that a lot of you are intermediate potters because you've been following along with the beginner and intermediate sections of my playlist on the YouTube channel. Because of that, you probably are at the stage where whenever you pull out your well, you're, you're probably not letting this part here go past the very base of where you centered your clay in the first place. This is really good. This is actually a wonderful thing because a lot of people have their pieces flop down whenever they're making bowls and bottles and cups for that reason. They like to pull their well a little bit past the point in which they set their clay right here. But for this one specific shape, this is probably the only one that you really wanna pull a little bit less than the base of which you centered. You see, sooner or later, you're either gonna have to have one of two options. You're either gonna have to trim this belly downwards so that it makes kind of this slope going downwards and into itself as it comes down, or you're just gonna have to not pull the base as much. I like to opt for option number two, simply because it makes my job a lot easier when I have to trim, but that's just a little potter tip that'll save you a tiny bit of time for later on in the trim. So just pull this out a little bit instead of like pulling it out as if you were making a bowl. Step number one, make a cylinder, complete. Now this is the difficult part. You guys remember those previous videos when I showed you how to make a bottle beforehand? Well, we're gonna pop out the body just like we did in video number two when I was showing you how to make a bottle. The only difference is we're not gonna go all the way up the body. As you can see on the other double humped gourd that I made, I've only popped out a small portion of the body up to this point. What I usually do when I throw a double humped gourd is I'll pop out the body to about halfway of the cylinder about right here. After this, I'll choke this part in and keep this part as little as I can. Just like in the other videos that I had named, I try and keep the top of the cylinder smaller so I can pop it out. It's much easier to just choke in the top right away, leave it very small and pop it out than it is to take it from being all the way out like a flower and collar it all the way back in. You'll see what I mean in a second when I start throwing this, but trust and believe, it'll make your life a lot easier if you just keep the top part small while you push out the bottom part for this lovely gourd shape here. Good, we popped out about half of the cylinder and made a belly at the very bottom of it. Now we're gonna choke in the middle portion here and start collaring in the rest of the cylinder. As I said before, we're trying to keep this part extra small and we're trying to keep this part the same size. We're essentially done forming this part. We can leave this alone, but the rest of this needs to be pinched and collared in. So for this segment, you will have to learn or at least know how to collar in a clay body. Oh, 
water tip. We've just call it in the top while leaving the majority of the bottom alone. But just for an extra little push to get that extra nice waist and ratio curve, I like to pinch this in a little bit more. I won't collar in the rest of it. I'll really just wet my hands a tiny bit and pinch this part in so that it really gets its waist section. See that? Now it's starting to really take form. You don't have to do this. This is something that I prefer myself just because I really like that waist ratio to be smaller than the bottom and top. I also like to take my metal rib and get the non-straight part, that being the curved part right here, or the rib of the rib, put my rib backwards and press this in just a bit. This is going to smooth out the waist without the need for touching the inside of the cylinder. And you don't have to touch this part anymore. This part is essentially done from the waist and the bottom. You can probably tell by now that we're essentially making a cylinder and we're moving our way upwards. And now we're gonna make the shoulders by doing the same thing we did up here as we did down here. The only difference is that I'm gonna have to put my finger on the inside of the cylinder in order to push it outwards as I form it into a round. This last part here is probably the most difficult part just because all you're doing after all of this is you're taking in the very mouth or the very top of the piece and you're going to be crunching this inwards. This is why it's so important to learn how to choke before you even step up to this lesson. It's because you're going to have to learn to make yourself a little mouth, this little top right here. Nobody's going to drink from this, let's be honest. This is, this is kind of gross. This doesn't look good at all, but you're either going to have to learn how to make one of these or you can just, you know, choke it in until it gets like this. This part is almost inevitably going to happen to you. It happens to literally all of us anytime we try and make anything choked in too much. The clay gets a little bit uneven and starts to wiggle. Because of this, potters have devised a very simple trick. When your top gets wiggly like this, all you really have to do is take your pin tool and let this part ride along the very top right here of where it's wiggling. Don't stick it directly into the clay body, just kind of let it ride, stick your finger on the inside, and when the pin tool touches your finger after a little bit, all you have to do is lift your finger and it'll even it out for you. This is a great trick that even beginners can use because a lot of them don't know how to even out their clay or when they're throwing, they don't have perfectly wedged and soft clay. And because of this, your clay will just crinkle a lot on the top of most of the time. This will literally save most of your tops if you learn how to do this one pin trick. But the crinkling of the clay at the top of your cylinder will usually happen while making very small neck bottles like this. So I heavily suggest you get this trick down as well. This is actually one of my favorite parts because the more you choke in clay, the more you condense clay, which means that the more you condense clay, the more clay you have within any given space. This means that even though I've probably pulled this cylinder three times and it's probably already worn out, I can very easily pull the part that I already pulled again and make an even longer mouth if I feel like it. And if I'm really good, if I haven't tired my clay out too much, I can even wet it a tiny bit more and choke it in a little bit more to make an even smaller mouth if I like. Don't make it too small though, because after a while it gets really difficult to eat drink from. What I personally like to do is, again, flip my metal rib over and just let this curve make the curve of the mouthpiece right here. This usually makes a very good part for the human lip to rest on, and it makes it way easier instead of me figuring out how to form something, I can just turn it around and it'll kind of form itself. See? Now it's nice and curved. The bottom of the human lip will just sit right there, and it'll be really easy to drink from this after on. Just remember to smooth out your top because we're not savages. And that's pretty much it. You have officially made yourself a double humped gourd. A double humped gourd is actually not that difficult to make. The issue is that the skills required to get up to this level to make this type of shape all in one throw are a little bit difficult to obtain. You're gonna have to learn how to throw a cylinder and it's already hard to center on the wheel. Then you're gonna have to learn how to push clay out, pull it back in, 
push it out again, and then choke it back in. Basically two techniques done a total of four times within one shape. And that's what makes this an intermediate and a little bit of a difficult shape. One final part or two before I go is that you might want to take your rib or whatever have you and kind of straighten out those rounds by putting the flat edge on those bumps right before you take it off the wheel. Just straighten them out, dry them out a little bit. This will go a long way in your craft. But make sure the size and shape that you want your bottle is already done. You're really just straightening out a lot of the extra curves and bumps that you put in the bottle in the first place. So whatever you're going to do to this bottle, you should probably do it now before you take it off the wheel. Because after this, it's kind of a delicate shape to handle. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I just wanted to kind of finish off the bottle making series. If you guys haven't seen those videos prior, you'll probably get none of this. If you don't know how to choke, and you also don't know how to form a bottle in the first place or the mouth of a bottle, you probably are nowhere near this step at all. So make sure you go and see those videos. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. We have the Instagram where you can keep up with all my artwork, the Facebook fan page. And now, Lindsay M. Dillon and I have our own podcast, which will always be linked down below from this point on. Hopefully you guys have yourselves a great day. Good luck on your next art project and I will see you dirty potters next week. I just want you to know that it's 110 in Sacramento where I am right now and I wasn't able to turn on my fan because it gets in the way of the noise of the recording. So you had better click the like button.